Hello everyone, praise the Lord. We learned about uh, the church, uh, the part one, the body of Christ. And in part one, G I uh, explained you Jesus inaugurated the church, not the building. Ephesians chapter 1 23 says, And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. And Jesus said to Peter in that part one, I say unto you, Peter, on, upon this rock I will build my church, and gates of Haiti will not prevail over you. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That means Jesus says, I will is an act of my will, is a strategy I came up with that I will build my church. And Jesus said, if I am the one that builds it, I will build it in a such a way, a such a manner, there is a formation in that building that the gates of Hades, means hell shall not prevail against thee. The key talks about, key gives you the authority to give you access, to give you the power and give you the control. This is not only for Peter, this is including you and me, the church. And since Jesus ascended to heaven, we now as his body continue his presence on earth until he returns. Amen. Part two, in this part two, I will be explaining when did the church begin, started. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I welcome you in the name of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, in Matthew 9, your word says, your word says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send the laborers. Dear Lord of the harvest, we ask you to send laborers into the field around the world. In every place, Lord, let your word be preached, Lord. Call, the, call and anoint fishers of men. In the name of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. So the word church when used to refer all believers every way is pointed with the body of Christ. Colossians chapter 118 says Jesus Christ means he, the Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the church. Jesus uh, words is that I will build my church where the foretelling of what was about to happen when he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell uh, believers. Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 2, he says, he says in verse 3, uh, the chosen stone and his chosen people. Verse 5, he said, you also as living stone are being built up a spiritual house. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. In verse 9, he said, but you are the chosen generation a royal priesthood and a holy nation his own special people in gospel uh, john 14 says the night before jesus willingly went to the cross he spent time with his disciples teaching them the most important things knowing what was ahead of them jesus wanted them to take every word to uh, to heart you know jesus chose uh, uh, his 12 disciples uh, 12 of them whom he also pointed apostles like Simon who is named Peter his brother Andrew then James and John Philip Bartholomew Matthew Thomas James son of Alphaeus and Simon who was called the Zalot Judas a son of James and the Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus so during the supper jesus predicted judas betrayal and judas left the meal these 11 apostles these men inclined around the table they were sitting around the table were not you know extraordinary or super saints instead the lord chose them because they were just like you and me ordinary people the religious leaders did not think much about them, but Jesus did. The disciples were chosen for very fact that they were ordinary. They were not great men of God. They were men of a great God. Amen. Lord's choice of men should encourage us. All powerful God can do with the ordinary men and women such as you and I. Amen. Jesus final night, the last word to the disciples as he tried to prepare them for his coming death. He spent with his disciple where? In the garden of Gethsemane, night before his death. So Jesus and his disciple celebrated the Passover in the upper room of the residence. Okay. Before 
they began a supper, Jesus showed his disciples his care for them by kneeling down and washing disciples' feet. Jesus and the twelve apostles had gathered in a private room. You know, uh, he had uh, earlier directed Peter and the John to prepare the table last meal together. It was during this time that Jesus instituted the symbol of the New Testament. And Peter was watching, fascinated as Jesus bent down to wash disciples' feet. This was unusual, even the strange to see the master, the rabbi, the teacher washing the disciples' feet. Peter had observed Jesus rising during the supper to remove his outer garment and wrapped it around a towel around the waist. Peter well knew this was an act customarily you know, performed by slaves or servants. In that day, whenever the guest were invited to home, into a home, the lowest household slaves or servant washed the guest's feet. Okay, you can read this in John 1. And uh, uh, to this custom, in this case, since this was a private gathering, no servants were present to carry out the, you know, the duty of job of removing the sandals and washing the feet of the guest. For Jesus, it was the display of his humility and his servanthood. They have to follow him. Okay, how? By loving one another as he had loved them. Act of loving generosity are to be the hallmark of Jesus' followers. Jesus said, this is what will show the world who Jesus is and therefore who God is. Jesus' act of service included Judas Iscariot, who would later leave the supper in order to betray Jesus. After the foot washing, the men partook in the traditional Passover dinner. This particular Passover marked Jesus' institution of the Lord's Supper, means communion. Alluding to his death, he declared that the bread represent his uh, broken body and the cup represent his blood. So the unleavened bread would represent his broken body and the fruit of the wine would signify his blood that he would lose less than a day later. He also says, in, says to them in Luke 22, and if you read in verse 16, he said, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Verse 18, he said, I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. In a verse 30, he said, you may eat and drink at the table in my kingdom and sit on the throne judging the 12 tribes of Israel. When supper was finished, Jesus, his disciple, moved to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus spent time anguish in prayer. He went to the corner and he prayed for his father, to his disciples and the believers. You can read this amazing scripture, uh, John chapter 17. Jesus keeps saying that he's going away, which makes a disciple sad. Jesus said it was uh, for the best because it means that he will send the Holy Spirit, his spirit also known as the advocate, helper and the comforter. See, as a human earthly body, Jesus can only be in one place at a one time, but the spirit can be Jesus' divine personal presence in any place at any time and spirit will do number of things. Jesus said the spirit is the loving personal presence that will come and live in his, in his people and draw them into the love between the father and the son because God is love according to 1 John 4. Gospel of uh, John 14 uh, 6 to 7 Jesus answered I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me verse 7 he said if you really know me you will know my father as well from now on you know him and have seen him anyone who has seen me has seen the father for example root is connected to the fruit you won't see the fruit until, uh, unless you connect it to the root you know? so Jesus said his, they said to his disciple, you are the one who abides and remain in divine love the way the branches are connected to the vine. Root of the tree is not separate from the branches 
or the fruit. Same way you have to be abide in, in, in God. Spirit also will empower Jesus followers to carry on his mission in the world. To first of all, to fulfill the great command is to love one another through radical act of service. It also, Jesus said, the mission is to bear witness to the truth. Jesus made really big promises to his disciple. You know, God always keeps his promises, isn't it? And uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says to his disciple, one of the promises written in John chapter 14 and John chapter 15, you have to read the whole uh, chapter for this amazing chapter. John chapter 14, he said, what I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. In fact, he will do even the greater things that is because I am going to my father. What he's trying to say is here is, you are going to work in my place as a representative. Oh my God, did you hear that? Jesus promised that the disciple means you and me would do greater things than Jesus did. Let me ask you, according to the gospel, the good news, the living word, what are the some of the amazing things that Jesus did? He was he preached the good news, uh, 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 preached the kingdom of God. He cast out evil spirit. He healed the paralyzed. He calmed the storm. He multiplied the bread on the fish. And he walked on the water. He, he taught the great, uh, how to walk in a great authority. He, he showed how to love one another, raising the dead. Yet he said, you would do greater things than me. Wow. John 14, if you love me, you keep my commandment uh, and I will pray to the father that he will give you the another helper that he may abide with you forever and he said the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it is neither sees him nor know him but you know him for he dwell with you and he will be in you I will not leave you as open I will come to you and he continued uh, John 14 22 Judah the son of James not Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus so he asked Lord how it is that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world so Jesus answered and said if you anyone loves me he will keep my word so John 14 he continues these things I have spoken to you while I'm present with you but after I'm gone, I will send the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring, your, bring it to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you. Then he continues, peace I leave with you, my peace I give it to you, not as the world gives do I give, you, give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In chapter 15, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, I am in him, bear much fruit. And without me, you can do nothing. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire, it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And he said, you did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and pay fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask in my father in my name he may give it to you these things I command you that you love one another fruits represent it's not a grapes orange pineapple fruit of the spirit it represents the fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 22 to 23 says fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithful and gentleness self-control against such there is no law and he also wants if the world hates you you know that he hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love its own Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If he persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Continue saying in John 16, I have come forth from the Father and have come into this world. Again, I leave 
the world and go back to my father john 3 316 said god so loved the world as to give his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him may not perish but have eternal life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved amen then he said these things i have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world see just imagine disciple what must have gone through their head here is the disciple who walked with jesus 3 and 1/2 years 24/7 they had question they went to jesus they had um uh, problem they went to jesus they have crisis they went to jesus they wanted need they went to jesus now jesus telling them i'm going back to my father jesus said i know you are very sad from hearing all all of this but i tell you that i am going to do what is best for you that is why i'm going away the holy spirit cannot come to help you until i leave but after i'm gone i will send the spirit to you just imagine that the panic went through what that panic went to disciple what is better than walking with the son of god though the jesus was 100% god he was also 100% man limited in earthly body he was doing one uh, one time he was in the glory in heaven without no limits next minute all of a sudden he was limited in the earthly body now he can do only one thing at a time even jesus said that when he went to be with his heavenly father he would send the god's holy spirit to live in each one of them each one of us then he wants them do not go anywhere do not do anything until you are endowed with the power even jesus imagine jesus even needed the being a son of god needed that holy spirit so this holy spirit soon they would be filled disciple will be filled with the same power that jesus was filled with that's how they would do even the greater things than hey him he jesus said jesus promises that every single person who trust in him will receive the holy spirit by the power of the holy spirit we will do impossible things beauty of the new covenant in roman chapter 7 6 says but now we have been re- released from the law having died to that which we were bound in order for us to serve in newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the latter means the church now we have a responsibility that what we have been called to do to be representative to be ambassadors and to what he called us to do when did the church begin the church began on the day of the pentecost means 50 days after passover when jesus died and rose again Remember one of the Jesus disciple Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver who killed himself so they have 11 apostles so after the resurrection in Matthew 28 Jesus had materialized a fleshly body after Jesus resurrection he arranged for his 11th apostles to meet him at the mountain in Galilee other disciples were there too about the 500 500 of them some of whom initially still they had doubt you know is jesus is alive jesus explained that god has given him all authority in heaven and on earth jesus urges disciples saying that go therefore and make disciples of people of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father son and the holy spirit teaching them to do observe all the things i have commanded you Yes not only is Jesus alive but he is still interested in having the good news preach that is the gospel hallelujah so listen all of Jesus followers men women and children receive this same commission to make disciples apostles may try to stop or the your preaching or teaching here jesus assures us all authority has been given to me he says in heaven or not he gives that anointing and backup man so jesus appears to his disciples throughout 40 days after his resurrection 
one of the reasons Jesus stayed on earth for 40 days after his resurrection, instead of ascending to heaven, immediately into heaven, was to demonstrate to his followers that he truly was alive. Many of them still doubted because after all, they knew the Roman authorities had put Jesus to death and that his body had been taken down from the cross and sealed in a tomb. And when that happened, disciples were given up on everything, filled with the despair and fear. Many even went into hiding. They had uh, believed Jesus was the promised Messiah after his crucifixion and now their hopes were shattered. They had forgotten his promises that he would return from the grave and they felt they had no future. That's why disciples ran away from, uh, from there in fear. But when Jesus appeared among them after the resurrection, their life were changed. Amen? greatest miracle in all history had just taken place. Jesus Christ was alive. Amen. The Bible said during those 40 days, he appeared to various group of disciples, proving beyond doubt to them that he had been raised from the dead by the power of God. Romans 8, 11, 13 talks about it. For example, Jesus appeared first to Mary, the Magdalene in Jerusalem. You can read in Matthew 28, Mark 16, John 20. And two disciples on the road to Amos, Luke 24. To Simon Peter, Luke 24, again, 1 Corinthians and 15, you can read this. To his disciple in the evening of that first day, John 20. Even John 29, the week later, Thomas and the disciple, he was seen. And he appeared to James in 1 Corinthians 15. And to Peter, to the apostle in Galilee. Also, at the same time, Christ Jesus appeared to his disciple even after his ascension to heaven. Stephen saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Oh, amen and amen. Saul experienced conversion on the road of Damascus when he was blinded by the bright light and told, I am Jesus, why are you persecuting me? So he was persecuting believers. He said, why are you persecuting me? The Lord Jesus appeared to Ananias in Damascus, instructing him to baptize Saul in Tartus in Acts 9. Remember, Jesus said, as a human, earthly body, Jesus can only be in one place at one time. But the spirit can be Jesus' divine personal presence in any place at any time. And the spirit will do a number of things. Amen. Another reason, however, why Jesus stayed on earth after the resurrection was to teach his disciples and prepare them for the task of telling telling the world about Christ. He materialized various body to shows, uh, shows himself alive to them by many convincing proof, instructing them about the kingdom of God. So 1 Corinthians 15 says, Jesus appeared to James, then to all the apostles. How? While they were running away. <laughs> in scripture it says, uh, in Acts chapter 1, you know, while the apostle was still in Galilee, it is, I think, four day traveling to Jerusalem, one, 126 kilometer. Jesus directed them to go, go back, return to Jerusalem and said, wait there. Because they were running away. They were afraid because their master, their rabbi, their teacher being killed. Now they would be the next online. Jesus said, go back to Jerusalem, wait there. Disciples, they were with Jesus' ministry for three and a half years, yet they had to wait, not supposed to start their ministry. But Jesus said, I am risen. Let me give you a secret. Wait, Terry, until you are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. God's power is defined as a dynamic ability to cause changes. You cannot cause changes or change without a power, amen? You must create a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Without Holy Spirit, you can do nothing. This was not a suggestion. 
it was a command of the master that commandant has never been withdrawn amen to every disciple to every followers of the lord jesus christ the commandant stands still and and that is to wait you need to wait and you have to be filled with the power of the holy spirit even jesus jesus needed that endowment of power and he received in the river of jordan just as the ministry of jesus depended on the holy spirit descending on him at his baptism so the ministry of the disciple depended on them receiving the holy spirit and relying on his power while they had experienced a measure of the spirit power before now he would come to dwell in them permanently amen in other in uh, in order to understand the reason for being water baptized it is important to carefully consider what the bible says about it jesus himself was baptized he was not a sinner being a son of god yet he humbled himself in obedience to identify with us and give us an example to follow water baptism is an act of faith and obedience to the command of christ and also the ritual that demonstrate a person's rejection of his old life and he, and his new dedication to his new life and a relationship with god amen baptism is a symbol baptism is an outward testimony of the inward change in a believer's life you know um, some believers may say he jesus did the miracle he walked on water raised the dead because he was a son of god let me ask you a question when jesus was 12 when he was 25 29 years old was he the son of god yes did he do any miracle during those period no when he start doing a miracles it was only when jesus was baptized and while he prayed the bible says the heaven opened and the holy spirit descended on him and he was filled with the holy spirit then the bible says then he went around doing good healing all god was with him if jesus christ the son of god needed the holy spirit to fill fulfill his plan for god's plan and for his ministry if the very begotten son of god needed the that supernatural in endowment of power how much more do we need it hena right? not only to fill with the holy spirit but avail to the ministry of the holy spirit called the spirit of god so before they could go forth into the world to preach the gospel they first had to have his enabling power So Jesus after the resurrection he warns them for John indeed baptized with water but you will be baptized with the holy spirit or the, or the spirit of god not many days after this when we are saved we are baptized by the spirit into the body of Christ which is the church now during the ascension His glorious ascension signify the completion of his time on earth means Jesus time on earth which is celebrated by the church the body of Christ not a building after 40 days after the resurrection the 10 days before the pentecost the coming of the holy spirit marks the beginning of the christian church's mission to the world Our Lord Jesus Christ gave us hope by promising that when I go I prepare a place for you I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am you may be also Jesus explained the disciple the work they must do he says you will receive the power when the holy spirit come upon you and you will be witness to me in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and all the most distant part of the an apostle were on the mountain of olives with the resurrected jesus when he was begins to raise towards heaven soon the cloud covered him from their sight and after the resurrection jesus had materialized fleshly bodies but now jesus dematerialized the body he used on this occasion and he ascends to heaven as a spirit creature as the 
faithful apostles are gazed after him two men in white garment appeared beside them these are materialized angels who asked men of galilee why do you stand and looking into the sky this jesus who was taken up from you into the sky will come in the same manner as you have seen him going into the sky amen by visibly going up into the air jesus made it clear that he wasn't just disappearing he was going to heaven and there he would be at the right hand of father apostle paul says in roman 8:34 christ jesus who died more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of god also interceding for us you know one writer puts it this way jesus is our man in heaven we have somebody in heaven who understand who we are understand our weaknesses understand our needs his journey on earth can relate to all humans our weaknesses our sadness our hurt rejection torture insult everything the way in which jesus is living on earth right now through your body the church according to first corinthian uh, 19 says or do you not know that your body is a temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you are not on your own for you are bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and your spirit which is god so you are the temple of the holy spirit you are the temple of god back to the story and jesus said go back to jerusalem don't run away from there wait for my promises so during the following days they gathered with other disciples including mary the mother of jesus and his brothers and the 12th apostle like you know to replace judas iscariot who you know betrayed jesus they had to replace the 12th apostle right so acts 1 was 23 to 26 if the matthias chosen to replace judas so 10 days after jesus ascended to heaven the jewish celebrated the festival on the day of the pentecost and the scripture says in the same day about 120 of the disciples were assembled in the upper room on jerusalem while they were praying worshiping and praying for the holy spirit suddenly a noise just like a uh, like a thunderstorm the breeze filled the whole house the tongue as if of a fire came and it became visible upon each who were present there the fire represent the indicate the divine presence of god the disciple or began to speak in different languages this is the outpouring of the holy spirit that jesus had promised pentecost in hebrew called a shabawat you know rabbi jonathan khan explains in his teaching he says the passover and what rabbis did is they calculated it out and found out that when you take the passover of the exodus old testament and you go and count the time until the feast of the shavuot means new testament the day of the pentecost see in old testament that moses is going up to the mountain top to receive the law 10 commandments exodus 19 moses meets god on the mountain of sinai so what it became later on it became the celebration also giving of the law of the covenant of god so amazing thing is in new testament god gave the power of the new covenant the power called the spirit of god that is the holy spirit so it was the same exact day as they were celebrating the giving of the old covenant in a old testament god gave the torah the 10 commandments on the same day like that the same event so in the new testament god gave the spirit of god called the holy spirit because what we know here is this shavuot when translated in greek it became a pentecost so john 1:17-18 says for the law was given through moses and grace and truth 
came through Jesus Christ. No one have ever seen God, but the one and the only Son who is Himself God and is in the closest relationship with the Father has made Him known. Amen. So Pentecost means 50 days, feast of the harvest. When they go out into the summer harvest, they reap all the field of the harvest until they would come in again once more at the end of the sacred year in autumn for the feast of the tabernacle. To understand this event, we must understand the Jewish feast of the Pentecost. It was not by coincidence that God poured out his spirit on the disciple on that day. There were three great Jewish feasts each year. Number one, Passover in the spring, celebrating Israel's deliverance from Egypt, followed immediately by the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Number two, Pentecost also called a Feast of Weeks, which occurred 50 days, seven weeks after Passover. Number three, the tabernacle in the fall, the Pentecost was an initial harvest feast where the Jewish were to offer to the Lord the first fruit of the new grain. Among other rituals, they were to wave the before the Lord two loaves of the wheat bread made with leaven. That what it meant, Shavuot. So they would go, they would take before the Lord the first fruit of the summer harvest, including the bread, okay? Two loaves of bread, they offer it to the Lord. And by offering to the Lord, it would be declared holy because it was the first fruit. The Roman 11, 16 says, if the part of the dough offered as first fruit is holy, then the whole bunch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. Hallelujah. Prophetically, it meant every other things they would reap in the summer harvest was counted as a holy to the Lord because it was indicated in the first fruit. So 2000 years ago, when the harvest about to begin, God took his own first fruit, Shavuot, not wheat, not bread, but took 120 lives in that upper room. The 120 of the disciples are assembled in the upper room in Jerusalem. Amen. In that upper room, he poured out upon them his spirit. By that, he declared to them holy. But that means this was the first fruits of a bunch of the disciples. They stood for everyone who were going to come into salvation. And if they declare holy, then everyone who would come from every nation would be declared holy. Amen. This picture came to fulfillment in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of the Amen. Until this time, the Lord's people consisted of Israel along with a few Gentiles proselytes. Not all is Israel were believers, but it was through that nation exclusively that God worked through his covenant promises to form a people for himself. But now the Lord formed the body of Christ, the church, made up of Jewish and Gentiles on equal footing. Hallelujah. James 1.18 says, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creature. Amen. Bible says that's why they spoke in other languages, because they were the first fruit representing all the nation that would ever come into salvation hallelujah so if they are declared holy we are declared holy as a believer of christ the church amen 
Jesus while he was on earth mean earthly ministry scripture says Matthew 9:35 to 38 then Jesus went about all the uh, all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogue preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sicknesses and every disease among the people but when he saw the multitude he was moved with a compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like a sheep having no shepherd then he said to his disciple harvests are plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray to uh, pray the lord of the harvest to send out the laborers into his harvest amen so in first corinthians 3 uh, verse 5 says and to leaven if you read it says uh, apostle paul said now he who plants and he who waters are one and each one of will receive his own reward according to his own labor now we are god's fellow workers you are a god's field you're god's building that means you're the temple you're the church the body of christ and jesus ministered to them the love of god scripture says they returned to jerusalem Apostle went back to the Jerusalem, which is a half a mile away from the city, from the mount called Olvet, which is near to Jerusalem. And when they when they entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Okay, so they were as they entered, they didn't go to the Jewish people where they having festival, dancing, and celebrating. They went as they entered, they went to the upper room for the to have a prayer meeting so after they filled with the holy ghost boldness came upon them the bible says and they faced the jewish who was celebrating who was celebrating in that in that field Ephesians chapter 3 12 says in whom we have boldness and access with the confidence through faith in him in who in christ Holy Spirit gave apostles, these disciples, boldness. They were shy, they were afraid before, but not after the pouring of the Holy Spirit. When, when the baptism or the fire comes upon you, you go and preach to people with boldness. When you baptize with the holy fire, you don't care whether it's a small group or big, big gathering, you get that boldness. Same thing had happened as they were they filled with the Holy Spirit from the upper room, you know, Peter went to the place they were celebrating. The scripture says Peter preached to the people at the temple where, where they were celebrating, you know. And the Peter was probably standing on the south stair where the, the healing water flowed. You know, in the Ezekiel chapter, if you are f uh, familiar with the Ezekiel chapter 47, the scripture he, in the vision he says, thousand cubit water come up to my knees thousand cubic uh, cubite water comes up to my waist thousand cubic water comes up to my too deep one must swim holy spirit will take over this is the interpretation of ezekiel vision came to pass in acts chapter 2 41 thousand pe three thousand people got saved amen remember in part one the church message teaching Jesus said to in Matthew chapter 16 18 to Peter Peter upon this rock I will build my church gates of heady shall not prevail against it and he says I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven on on the day of the Pentecost Peter opened the door for 3,000 souls 3,000 people got saved in Acts chapter 2 41 3,000 received the word of God and baptized got saved in the Acts chapter 4 for 5,000 people he opened the door for the Gentiles centurion Cornelius and hereby to the whole Gentile world according to the Acts chapter 10 this is what happened when you fill with the fire of the Holy Spirit the scripture said boldness came upon them and Peter used this opportunity to preach the truth about Jesus to the large crowd that was gathered and thousands of Jewish people from all the part of the world were in Jerusalem for the feast of the Pentecost to celebrate they heard the gospel they heard the good news in their own languages language 
Acts chapter 2, you can read 5 to 8. You know, verse 7 to 8, in the same uh, chapter 2. Multitude came together and they were confused. And they confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled and saying to one another, Look, are not these people are Galileans? They speak, they're from Galilee, they speak Galileans. And how it is that we hear each in our own language in which we were born. How they were able to hear in their own languages? Remember in the upper room, Jerusalem, why they were praying? Suddenly noise just like that, a rushing step, breeze filled the whole house while they were praying. Tongues as if of fire become visible on upon each of those who were present in that in that prayer meeting that is called the presence of God and the disciple all begin to speak in a different languages this is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Jesus had promised so each one of them they heard in their own language the gospel so those who were saved were baptized adding daily to the church see the changes before this twin dwelling of the holy spirit see the changes that came over the disciples after they were filled with the holy spirit you know remember how they fled from christ in the garden of gethsemane when they came to arrest jesus they you know mark 14 50 it says they all left him and fled think of how peter could not confess Christ before a young uh, that lady Matthew 26 71 Mark 14 30 and denied Jesus three times I do not know him after coming of the spirit on the day of the Pentecost they were sent back into the world the Holy Spirit empowered God's word when they spoke and endorsed their message by accompanying the word of God with the wonderful signs and wonder after indwelling of the Holy Spirit now Peter stood boldly in the in, uh, in front of uh, the thousand people to tell the message of Jesus he asked everyone in that crowd to repent of their sin and receive forgiveness by believing in Jesus Christ how do you think Peter was able to do this now he had received God's Holy Spirit. Amen. They were suddenly empowered to boldly proclaim the gospel of the risen Messiah. Miracles uh, followed by miracles and wonders. They were spiritually empowered. You know, the scripture says, lame man healed, Acts chapter 3. Unclean spirit came out of many, Acts chapter 8. They healed sick people and cast out the evil spirit in Acts chapter 5. When the Peter shadow fell on them, they were healed also, the Acts chapter 5. Peter even raised the woman from the dead, Acts chapter 9. Wow, God's power is like a spiritual dynamite. It was given to every believer, even you and me. Thousands of Jewish from all the part of the world were in Jerusalem for the Feast of the Pentecost. Hena. They heard the good news in their own languages. Amen. Those who were saved were baptized, adding daily to the church. It's wonderful. My question, did Jesus keep his promise that they would so even do greater things than he had done? Yes. When the apostle performed a miracle and spoke about Jesus, more people believed in Jesus. Acts chapter 4 4. God's kingdom grew and grew. God did not give the believers this power for their own fame or popularity. God gave them the Holy Spirit to further his kingdom, to introduce his kingdom. When the persecution broke out, the believers scattered, taking the gospel message with them. And the church spread like a wildfire to all the part of the uh, uh, part of the world. The start of the church involved in uh, Jews in Jerusalem, but the church soon spread to other people's groups also. The Samaritan were evangelized by the Philip, and uh, in Acts 10, God gave Peter a vision that helped him to understand that the message of salvation was not limited to the Jewish and but to open to anyone who believed. because Acts chapter 10 34 
if you read from 45 it says uh, verse 34 says so peter opened his mouth and said truly i understand that god shows no partiality but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him amen and uh, verse 45 the gift of the holy spirit was poured out even on the gentiles nine gift of the holy spirit even the new testament talks about the paul in the new testament the miraculous calling of paul on the road to damascus in acts chapter 9 set the stage for an uh, even greater spread of the gospel to the gentiles saul who convert became a paul the most amazing conversion in the bible is of a guy named saul the most influential figure of the apostolic age according to the record in the new testament the before his conversion who was a religious extremist that killed christians one day on his way to the damascus he encountered the resurrected jesus jesus said to uh, saul why are you persecuting me saul fell to his knees and said oh my lord my god the man who had once been a religious extremist uh, fortunately later year the paul life show a marked difference as he lived his life for christ he means saul who formerly persecuted uh, believers now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy amen and uh, people glorified god in me he says and for the advancement of his kingdom also became the apostle of love saul who known as apostle paul now wrote the most of the new testament including the some of the most beautiful word of love ever written in first corinthian 13 the everlasting completely free love of god will do that it changes lives jesus prophetic word to peter before the crucifixion have proved true gates of hades have fought against it the church only grew stronger amen there was an you know inseparable link between the holy spirit and the church the way the church is there is god's spirit the way the god's spirit is there is the church that is you and me the body of christ you need to remember that our purpose as the Lord's church is not to focus on ourselves and our own happiness. Our purpose is to spread the knowledge of God to all the nations beginning here in our own, uh, own home, own country, own nation you belong to. If we lose our outward focus with our overall purpose of God's glory, we have lost our reason for our existence. In a Roman 8 says, those who live according to the flesh have their mindset on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mindset on what the spirit desires. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. That's what the scripture says. The church is the continuing manifestation of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The church exists by the will of God, the Father, and His plan to gather all people under the Lordship of His Son, Jesus. As a head of the church, Jesus Christ continued to fill her, her means the church, that is you and me, with his life and saving grace. Pouring into her, into the church, the Holy Spirit, with his gift of unity, peace and love. Amen. You know what? This is the extraordinary responsibility and privilege that Jesus gives to us, the church. He gives us the keys of the kingdom. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth or earth and heaven. 
if the if you say yes on earth yes in heaven if you say no on earth no in heaven amen the church armed with the key of the kingdom can storm the gates of hell amen and set the prisoners free the gates of hell will not hold out against the church amen and amen you can have the amazing privilege of seeing people set free through the preaching of the good news of the kingdom amen you can have the joy of seeing people set free from every addiction crime and every other bondages you can approach challenges with the confidence fearing no evil knowing that you share in the remarkable spiritual authority amen john the revelator in revelation chapter 7 9 he says in his vision the church as god designed it to be after this he says after this i looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation tribe people and language standing before the throne and before the lamb the church that jesus began will continue until the day he comes for us amen revelation 19:7 says let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready who is bride you and me are you ready is your faith in the risen christ number 2 Are you seeking to share his message of salvation with others? I leave you with this question asking are you ready? This was his idea the church to uh, birth it and the church to be a victorious that's it. That was God's idea for you and me. Amen. Deuteronomy 29:29 says the secret things belongs to the Lord our God. but the things revealed belongs to us to the church and to our children forever that we may follow all the words of his law amen if you want to invite god of love jesus into your heart to become your personal lord and savior just repeat this prayer after me amen lord jesus i confess my sin and ask for your forgiveness Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily through your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Until we meet again, God bless you and shalom.